Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're all doing well in this month of August that we're at right now. And I um, thought I'd give you guys a garden tour to see what's growing out here. There's actually a couple hundred varieties of plants that I'm growing in this about 5 by 60 something square feet space. So you can see it is a very narrow space and within that 5, uh, five feet it's like um, there's about a foot and a half pathway like to walk so as you can see that there's actually very little space that I'm growing on both sides mainly so I'm not going to talk about like 200 varieties of things that I'm growing in here but I am going to share with you some of the highlights of the plants that are growing really well this season I'll also be sharing some techniques of how I grow my things in this small space with you so recently I've been doing, uh, actually working on a drip irrigation system, so be sure to tune in for that video that will be out and it's going to be super in depth of how I did it. So today we're just going to be harvesting some of the things that are uh, produce that are ready here and we'll have a little chat and I'll probably take the camera back and kind of show you guys around some of the plants just because I think that's going to be the easiest way to do it in this small space. So let's get started. This is the door to the front yard and as you enter, I got the loofah growing up here. This trellis, by the way, you guys, was totally saved my butt because last year I was growing the loofah on the arc trellis that, if you guys have seen that episode, I'll link it down below to see how I built that. I built that with my parents and, I mean, I got about three different types of vines growing on this trellis and so the loofah is really huge and I was trying to maintain it within that space and it didn't I mean it really wants to get bigger and spread and so what happened was the loofah I would just kind of let it go and had it growing outside and it was just you know going a little crazy and then it fruited outside and what happened was the loofahs got stolen so that's just a little quick update for those of you who wanted lupa seeds. They were just drying like 80-85% dried and then one morning I woke up and those lupas were gone. Um, so I was pretty bummed about that because lupas, what they really grow well in is full sun and I didn't have that uh, enough space for them to, to fruit in this more private area so I just said it's okay just let it do its thing and just let it be outside and that's just the risk you take when you grow things outside so this year what I've been doing was I was kind of scratching my head thinking how am I going to build this trellis for it to climb inside our space but, you know for someone who's not handy who has no skills in any kind of like carpentry so I was scratching my head thinking how am I going to be building this without any skills in you know woodworking so this trellis that I actually finally you know put together was made by thriving design these clamps are called sea bites and I'm telling you these these sea bites totally saved my butt because I'm really thankful that I was able to put this trellis together so easily. I mean those clamps are so sturdy that are on these stakes and the only thing I gotta say is those clamps do take a little bit of strength to push it in but I think my strength sometimes it's like below average so I'm not all that strong. I did not hear anyone complain about you know it being difficult to push that clamp in besides myself. So other than that, once you get that pushed into the stake, it really holds it really well. As you can see, loofahs are so, uh, so heavy, especially the more they're starting to dry up, they actually get really heavy. And, um, but that's the only way I got to get it, uh, a trellis high enough for the loofah to climb. And so this is what I came up with. So I'm really grateful that, that Thriving Design has supplied me with these to test out and I love them so much I'm really excited and I wanted to let you guys know about it so if you are interested I'll leave the affiliated link down below so you guys can get free shipping for this product and try it out yourself what I really love about it is that everything is so versatile I mean the sky is the limits when it comes to building your trellis with um, with 
easy, you know, clamps that if there's anything you want to change ideas or take it down at the end of the growing season, you can do that so easily without wasting any materials. All you need are just some garden stakes and, and the clamps. But for me, growing in this small space, I'm just going to leave it here probably permanently. So I'll let you know how well these clamps hold up in the sun and year round. <laughs> So check out you guys. So this is um, a loofah that's dry now so it's getting really firm right here and I got this copper mesh wire thing wrapped up because we've been having some rodent issues. So if you guys have any suggestions of some sort of more humane ways to tackle this, leave a comment down below. You guys, I'm trying a bunch of different ways but they definitely love this edible garden. <laughs> so yeah, I got some cucumbers. Uh, scarlet runner beans growing here. I got a maypole here. You can see this is actually a, a cabbage tree so it looks like a cabbage shape and grows vertically. I really try to grow everything vertically because growing in a narrow space things get shade out really easily so stuff actually grows slower for quite a long it grows slow for quite a long time and then once it reaches enough height to get to more sun it'll shoot up um, a lot faster. So I would say growing in a small space, especially a small narrow space where you got a lot of shade areas, you got to build up. You got to let the plants grow upwards as high as you possibly can, doing it safely of course. So that's what I decided to do and this is a maypole that easily just kind of strapped over and I got some beans that I'm actually going to be harvesting pretty soon here. And then we got these uh, this is actually a, a Barbado gooseberry. These leaves are edible. This is one of the rare plants out here. Um, very nutritious. It has those little like gooseberries, like I said. I have not seen it flowered yet. And those green beans, that's a variety that my friend's dad gave me, which you would catch on the, um, his garden tour. So if that video is already out, I'll link, it, I'll link it down below or you guys check it out on the cart up there once it's out. So let's come along. This is succession planting. I got more green beans growing and this little pond for some water uh, water chestnuts. Purple yam that's growing. My grass jelly. This is a grass jelly vine. Uh, I got chili up there because this is a fushimi chili. It's supposed to be a sweet pepper. And um, I just got the little drip irrigation set up, you guys, on this part. So I'm super excited because it's actually pretty difficult for me to reach certain height. And now that I got the drip irrigation going, I'm thinking I can grow even higher up because I don't have to be climbing on a stool to water anymore. So that's pretty exciting for me. Uh, right over here, if you guys let, uh, would know what this gourd or squash is, please let me know in the comments below. This came as a volunteer, but it's definitely, I'm pretty sure it came from one of the gourds that I got at the Heirloom Expo. So that's going to be pretty cool. Some sort of heirloom variety. This is turmeric, some pansies down here that are still growing from winter. Uh, some more of this Barbado uh, gooseberry. This is African blue basil. I can't wait till more flowers come because they really attract the bees. And I got uh, this is peanuts. I'm trying out peanuts for the first time. I'm pretty excited about some uh, toilet paper if you ever have the need. I think I'm gonna actually probably might try it out to let you guys know how it goes. But it's growing so beautifully with this a cerilla cherry. Look at all these blooms. Oh my goodness. I'm counting on you please. I cannot wait to have some cherries off of this. This is so delicious when you grow it yourself when it's actually ripened on the tree. It's so good. So this is full of blooms right now. Right over here this is the raised bed that I put together actually a few years ago. <laughs> actually a little longer than that. And um, this is more like a shade side and this is the sun side. So I got the Ashitaba growing on this row here. As you can see, this one is flowering. So there will be some more seeds available uh, soon, maybe during the cooler season. And I've got Okinawa spinach that grows really well, definitely more under the shade. And so I'm just growing a lot of different kinds of greens. 
Um, this one's actually pretty funny. This is a zucchini that was actually mislabeled. I was expecting to get cucumber starters, but they mislabeled it and so that's why I had it on this trellis because I was picturing it climbing up with the cucumber but it ended up being the zucchini so I just have to make it work as you can see I started out with some stakes that I had to tie up which was pretty handy with just some stakes and strings but I, it works a lot more sturdy a lot more faster than using strings would be these sea bites after you know getting these to sample I thought I'm just gonna keep building this cage kind of a trellis for the zucchini uh, I mean it's just the zucchini I went away and didn't get a chance to see that it was a zucchini by the time I came back it was way too big it was hard for me to remove at that point so that's just what happens you just kind of roll with it if you know when things happen then you just try to pick think of solutions for it and um, this is how I'm dealing with the zucchini growing in this small space this is a jambu, which I'll give you guys an update on what happened to the big tree. This leafy green here, I'll put the name down below. This is a, an Asian leafy green, grows as a vine. It's so hardy, there's abundance of them. I'll leave the name down here for you after I find out. I forget what it's called, but it's really hardy. Keep clipping them back and throwing them in soups. In fact, the leaves are so deep green that I juice with it. I also, I have seen in Vietnamese pastry, they actually extract the juice of this. So it's almost like black color because that dark green is so, so deep that they, um, yeah, they use that juice to make their pastry black color. So it's pretty cool. Right over here, I got these new fungus cucumber. By the way, I should, I think I should pick these right now. So this is ready to be picked. <laughs> Look at this, you guys. This is, I believe it's a soyu uh, cucumber. Ideally, I don't want to get my cucumbers so big because you really got to pick them more so that they they can be a more productive vine. There's two here that I need to snip off. Oh, it's so prickly when they're fresh, when they're fresh off the vine, they're so prickly. Yay! And, um, oh my goodness, I forgot, there's these carrots that have been growing in there for like over four months now. Let's come back and pick the carrots. got some cucumbers growing here at the same time with the carrots so the carrots was able to get a lot of sun before the cucumber got big and so I got this one that's humongous here I need to harvest this here we go oh there's two here okay good the soil's nice and moist in there because I'm still working on the timing for the drip irrigation. So I can totally juice this. This is full of, I believe it's like full like acid in the greens of carrots. By the way, this is a katuk plant, but this is a variegated variety. The leaves are super gorgeous. And I got some carrots planted underneath. Let's try this one. Oh, maybe they're like the stubby bird variety, I'm starting to think, because mm, it smells so good. Wow, fresh carrot. And then right over here, I got some um this is a what's it called alpine strawberries they're called alpine pineapple strawberries right over here oh they smell so good they smell like gummies when i walk close to this spot got a few different types of mints growing here i'm just gonna try this thing Hmm. 
<laughs> I'm so into growing like rare stuff that I've never grown carrots before. This is my first time. And you're supposed to grow carrots in the cooler season. But this is kind of like my late harvest. So I believe the sugar actually would concentrate and get sweeter in the winter. Well, winter here. <laughs> when the weather's cooler. So this actually snaps right off. Definitely has a good bite, but it's not as sweet as I would like it. Anyway, it's my carrot. Let's pick some green beans while we're here. And I know this seems a little inconvenient, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do with the space you have to grow the things you want. Just be careful. I'm feeling so tall. Because Lufa wants to climb up there, so I need to separate that. And while I'm on this ladder, I thought I would show you guys these peppers that I got growing on the... I made an upper, or I didn't intentionally make this, but as I was making the trellis, this design sort of just kind of intuitively came up and I thought, hey, let's grow these peppers high up here because that definitely would give it a lot of sun, right? I got some kale on this side. These are some... Uh, this is a cherry tomato. Oh wow, it's got such beautiful uh, sparkles. I've never noticed that on cherries. This is a uh, bumblebee or sunrise bumblebee sunrise cherry tomato. And I got some chard there. This is pineapple sage growing. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is my rock samphire. It's going to seed. I absolutely love this herb. And um, actually, this one I need to move this grass jelly because it doesn't want to be in this sun, this much sun. Uh, and I'm going to put a papaya out here. Right over here to my left. This is so pretty, guys. Look, this just opened today. Oh my goodness, I need to support this. This is a uh, paint lady, I think it's called, or painted. Anyway, this is a variegated variety of uh, tomato. And I got the galaxy growing on this side. I got some Egyptian spinach growing here. This is the red stem Egyptian spinach. They're growing so well right now in the heat. Oh, and this one here. This is, uh, oh goodness, Pepino Dulce. Is that what it's called? I'll leave the name down below for you guys the correct name but it's my first year of growing I'm super excited because it's supposed to taste between like cucumber and like honeydew or cantaloupe oh, I'm so excited and I got some banana peppers here growing so this part gets about mostly sun and sometimes a little bit of shade but I think there's enough sun on this section out here you see when you're growing way against the wall here you're getting more shade and so when you scoot out as having this second row here it's getting a lot more sun. And then there's like a huge pepper section that I found where I could where I could get full sun and that's right up top. I'm growing peppers and the highest level, the top shelf. So you can see right here. The space still needs to be organized. You got some sweet peppers, mild peppers mainly that are growing right up there so it's getting full sun. This is Italian pepperoncini, and I got some strawberries in this tower garden growing. They like some shade. So let's see what else. And then right over here I got some basil. So I'm actually going to be picking some basil because the more you pick, the more they grow. So here we're under the canopy here with some shade plants and actually got a cucumber vine growing really well in the back there. It's pretty good. 
We've got tomato over here growing. This is um, that ver variegated heirloom tomato that I'm just gonna allow this to climb up here. Use, utilize this post here um, as a stake for the tomato. And then I got the ear part of the drip irrigation system set up here. I'm really excited about because it's really hard for me to get all the way up there to water every single time. So there I guess different types of herbs growing down here as well as like sage and you know this purple, this opal, what is it called? This like deep purple basil marigolds. <laughs> and I got a chili up there because you got to have a chili that's Chili's love sun. The more sun you give it, the better. So now that I got the irrigation, I'm sorry you guys, I keep repeating myself about the irrigation. I'm just super excited about it. Uh, I don't have to climb anymore. And I got the soursop tree uh, that I grew from seed. So it's like extra special to me. Right in here, this is a cucumber. So I was thinking about it first, like should I grow the cucumber here? Because first I got the room for it. But second was that I was kind of concerned if it's too much shade for it, but actually is really loving. I mean, look how deep and perfect these, these leaves are. They are just loving this. I mean, I started off having this cucumber plant being like, I let it grow out in the sun um, about like this tall, where it was tall enough to easily reach the light in this shade, in this canopy. And so that's when I put it up and then it just started doing its thing and climbing and look, there's even a cucumber growing here. So this is pretty exciting. And then I got my giant air plants. And by the way, you guys, did you know that air plants, I believe it's like related to pineapple. So this totally looks like a pineapple head and this is the largest air plant I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's actually going to flower. And I got this Ashitaba right in front of you here. It's actually going to flower also. So I'll have some more seeds available on the website for you guys. All right, so that's all for this garden tour. I'll show you guys some more varieties in the next one. Thank you all so much. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. And uh, let me know down below what you guys are growing, you guys. And if you would like to follow me on social media, like Facebook or Instagram, where I do more instant, update, instant updates of my life, go ahead and follow me there as well. Um, if you're already there, you probably have seen me, you know, showing in the Insta stories of putting the drip irrigation system together, stuff like that. So you'll see things in real time there. If you would like to support my work, I really would appreciate it. Please go check out wendyland.com. And um, everything that I just mentioned in this video will be left with some links just below this video for you guys to uh, reference. Thank you all so much. Stay safe and healthy. I'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.